Hello everyone, it's Gail again from Ticket to Anywhere here with another edition of Friday Fragments which is a vlog meme hosted by James over at bookchicclub.blogspot.com and in this meme we um, read a little bit from our current book read or just one of our very favorite books and um, this week I'm actually going to read a little bit from the book I've been reading the last couple of days and it is The Way of Shadows by Brent Weeks. Isn't that a cool looking cover? Um, this is the first in a trilogy. Um, it's called the Night Angel Trilogy. And according to Goodreads, I'm about 26% of the way in it. It is a very long book, which is why when a friend loaned it to me long ago, it kind of it got put aside and I haven't been able to pick it up since because I've had review books and I'm a very, very bad friend when people loan me books. But I am reading it now and I'm liking it a lot. It's a fantasy read, but it's a, not like your typical high fantasy. Yes, there's m magic and stuff in there, but it's also primarily about assassins. In fact, the tagline says, the perfect killer has no friends, only targets. Um, and the scene that I'm going to read for you just to kind of set it up is um, the best assassin in this world, which I will not name because I cannot pronounce. Um, he was just re given an offer from Lord General Gunn, and I'm probably saying that wrong, uh, to pretty much become the king's like right hand assassin slash errand boy, and um, he was made an offer. There were some threats made because you know you can't make an offer to an assassin without threatening him because that is a smart thing to do, people. And so this is the assassin's response, and his name is Durzo Blint. Step away from the door, Azoth, he said stand by the window. There was no hesitation. Azoth had learned that lesson. He didn't have to understand. He just had to obey. He heard a crash on the stairs and loud cursing. Azoth stood by the window and looked at Master Blint, but the man's pockmarked face betrayed nothing. Moments later, the door banged open. The Lord General lurched in, sword drawn. What have you done? he roared. His knees bowed and he leaned heavily against the door frame to keep from falling. Master Blint didn't say anything. The General blinked and tried to straighten, but a spasm passed through his body as his stomach cramped. It passed and he said, How? I put a contact poison on the door latch, Master Blin said. It seeps right through the skin. But if we'd reached a deal, the Lord General said, I'd have opened the door for you. If you'd worn gloves, I had other plans. Now I want you to listen very closely. The king is an incompetent, treacherous, foul-mouthed child, so I'm going to make this very clear. I'm a first-rate rep wet boy. He's a second-rate king. I won't work for him. If you want, you can hire me yourself. I'll kill the king, but I won't kill for him. And there's no way you can pressure me. I know he won't believe that, because Aline Gunder is the kind of man who believes he can get whatever he wants. So here's why he's going to believe, Master, Master Blin stood. First, I'm going to leave a message for him tonight in the castle. Second. You're going to investigate what happened to Count Yosar Glynn. He was the client who betrayed me. Third, well, there's what's already happened to you. And fourth, Deuce said Agan and put away the sword, it's insulting. Lord General Agan crashed into a chair. The long sword fell from his fingers. He didn't appear to have the strength to pick it up. Regardless, his eyes were still clear, and he was still hearing every word Master Blint said. Lord General, I don't care who he kills. I know you have this inn surrounded, that there are crossbow men covering the windows of this room. They don't matter. More importantly, the king's threats don't matter. I will be no man's lapdog. I will serve who I will, when I will, and I will never serve a lean gunder. Azoth, come here. Azoth went to his master, wondering why Blint had used his name. He stood in front of Master Blint, who rested his hand on Azoth's shoulders and turned him to face General Agong. Azoth here is my best apprentice. He's agile, he's smart, he learns things after being told once. He works tirelessly. Azoth, tell the general what you've learned about life. Without hesitation, Azoth said, life is empty, life is meaningless. When we take a life, we aren't taking anything of value. Wet boys are killers, that's all we do, that's all we are. There are no poets in this bitter business. Lord General, Blight, Blint said, are you with me? I'm with you, the general said fire raging his eyes. Master Blint's voice was light. Then know this. 
I'd kill my own apprentice before I'd let you use him against me. The general jerked sharply in his chair as if shocked. He was staring at Azoth, following... Azoth followed his gaze to his own chest. Several inches of bloodied steel were protruding from him. Azoth saw them and felt an uncomfortable pushing, spreading sensation from his back, all the way through his center. It seemed cool, then warm, then painful. He blinked, his eyes slowly, and looked back into the general, whose eyes were full of horror. Azoth looked at the steel. He recognized that blade. He'd cleaned it that day he went looking for Dargal. He hoped Master Blint would at least wipe it down before he brought it back for Azoth to clean. It had filigree on the blade, and held blood if you let it dry there. Azoth had to use the point of a stiletto to pick it out. It took hours. Then Azoth was drawn to the location of the dagger. At that angle on a child's chest, it would have clipped the fat vessel above the heart. If so, the debtor would go down as soon as the dagger was drawn out. There would be a lot of blood. The debtor would die within seconds. Azoth's body jerked as the dagger disappeared. He was vaguely aware of his knees folding. He slumped over sideways and felt something warm spilling over his chest. The wood planks of the floor jostled him unmercifully as he sprawled over. He lay facing up. Master Blint was holding a bloody dagger in his hand and saying something. Did Master Blint just stab me? Zoth couldn't believe it. What had he done? He thought Master Blint had been pleased with him. It must have been Doll Girl. He must have still been mad about it. It had seemed that things were going so well. There was a white gold light everywhere, and he was warm. So warm. So that's my fragment from The Way of Shadows by Brent Weeks. It's a really good book, and I am really looking forward to see how this one fully progresses. And if you want to know more about Azoth and Durzo Blint and, you know, what happens next, be sure to go pick up a copy.